truth is defined as conformity to fact or reality, exact accordance with that which is, or has been, or shall be, the true state of facts or things. In today's culture, most people hold to the idea that truth is relative to the individual. But with nearly 8 billion people on planet Earth, whose truth is right? Jesus Christ is the most mysterious man to ever trod planet Earth. He said of himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In fact, in the book of Hebrews, the Bible calls him the anchor. Who is Jesus? The Bible declares that he is God in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto Gentiles, believed on in the world, received unto glory. So why would God leave heaven and take upon him mortal humanity? Why was he here? Matthew 18.11 sums up Jesus' purpose on earth by saying, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. In the beginning of time, God created a perfect world. A world that had no death, had no sin, had no sickness. It was a world that had no lies, no evil whatsoever. And into that world, God placed Adam and Eve, placed them in a land called Eden, specifically in the Garden of Eden. They had only one rule, only one command, and that was they were not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For a time, they lived in that perfect paradise in wonderful communion with God. But then Satan, with a lie, perverted the words of God. He deceived Eve and caused Adam to rebel in eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And from that point forward into this world came sin, thievery, adultery, murder, jealousy, lust, and lies are what the world is filled with today. And if we're honest, it's not just the world that is filled with sin, it is our heart that has been filled with sin. The Bible makes a very important statement about sin in the world and more importantly sin in our heart. Romans chapter number 3 states, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In another place it says, There's none that doth good, no not one. Since the fall of mankind there has been a disconnect, a breach between God and man. And that is why Jesus Christ left heaven and came in the flesh. He came to restore that brokenness, that separation, that loss of connection between God and men. The Bible calls it reconciliation. In fact, in Romans chapter number 5, again we're told, For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. The sins in our life require restitution. Because of that breach between God and man, there has to be a way of reconciliation. And that way is through the sacrifice and payment of Jesus Christ on behalf of our sins. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that we were saved, not by sacrifices and not by rituals, but by His own blood He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. How did Jesus Christ make this way of reconciliation? The scriptures tell us that Jesus Christ actually became our sin for us. Jesus Christ is not in a tomb somewhere in the Middle East. Three days after the crucifixion, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, rose from the dead. He then ascended into heaven where he's now seated at the right hand of God the Father, ready for that moment when a sinner like me or a sinner like you calls upon his name for the forgiveness of sins. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter number 10, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
Relativism plagues the world today with the idea that there is no absolute truth. But we know that that is a lie. Jesus is the truth. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus Christ is our anchor. The question is, do you want to be free? The answer is trust in Jesus.